the Know Your Gear podcast. Alex says, hey, I've had the urge to downside my collection. What? Thinning the herd? Oh, I hadn't. You, the hell you say? Thinning the herd is probably the most the term I see most every day on Reverb and Craigslist. Thinning the herd. So I think Alex wants to thin the herd. He says, I have an urge to downside my collection, but it's but I'm seeing this kind of trending with others. There is subtle marketing telling us to sell our guitars. If you want 50 guitars, have 50 guitars. If you want 500 guitars, have 500 guitars. If you want five guitars, have five guitars. The idea that if you have less guitars, you're a better guitar player is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> this is just dumb. I, I started this channel, know you, the, the know your, I'm just getting preachy, I guess. Know your gear, the, stra the, 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 the know your gear statement. I was watching a rig rundown with the guitar player from Fish and he was talking about his Mason Boogie amp. This is exactly the same rig that I played through at Nectar's. And I actually have a theory about that, if it's not too boring, but <laughs> I believe that um, being familiar with your gear is more important than having really good gear. And it, there he was, then he had a 212 cabinet that him and I think he said his roommate built. So this cabinet <laughs> was built in my living room by myself and Paul. And they said, oh, is it part of your sound? He goes, I don't know. He goes, we just built it because I was broke and it works and it sounds good and we've just been using it ever since. And he said, basically know your gear. He said, I would rather have this because I know how it sounds and reacts in environments than get a new cabinet and not know what's going on. And all of a sudden I heard the saying in my head, it's better to know how to use your gear than have good gear. Because he wasn't arguing that it's a great sounding cabinet. What he was arguing was exactly that. It's like, I, if I'm really good with a cheaper piece of gear, that's better than having a nice piece of gear I don't know how to use. And it really, for me at that time, it spoke to me because it was like, it was like your friends that had these modeling systems at the time. You know, they'd have these even tied programs. I know it's not modeling, but even tied racks, all this stuff. I couldn't figure that stuff out. To me, it just sounded horrible, but yet I could dial in a Fender or a Marshall, you know, and get a great tone really quickly. And instead of feeling inadequate about what I couldn't do, I was like, no, what's important is that I know how to use what I have. And I used to see that in the store all the time, somebody going, I'm selling this, I'm trading this in. I go, what was, oh, okay. And they go, yeah, I don't like it. Oh, what don't you like about it? And then through just a short conversation, every time it would be like, oh, you don't, you don't like it because of this? Did you know it did this? And they go, oh, it does? And then they play it and they go, oh, I kind of like, don't want to trade it in now. And I was like, yeah, it's because your first instinct, if it's something that sounds bad, it's the the gear's fault, the product's fault. And it's really like, you wanna know how to use it and utilize it in every way. And I almost kind of realized one day uh, that one of the drawbacks of having money <laughs> is you solve problems with money, right? So when you're broke and a piece of gear is not working, it's not loud enough, you put it on a chair and you angle it towards your face because you need to hear it. but when you have money and your amp's not loud enough, you just go buy a louder amp. It's like everything is solved with go buy stuff. And so I was like, know your gear. So when I, that's why I predicated the channel on, I don't want to react to gear like, this is my, oh, this is the first five minutes I have the gear, buy this. I wanted it to be like, this is what I learned to do with it. This is what I don't like about it. This is what I like about it. Maybe to give more insight, uh, spending time with it. And, uh, but, and a uh, but. And, uh, but uh, I get the concept of people saying you don't need a lot of gear. You don't need any gear, <laughs> right? You don't even need a guitar. You don't have to have anything. Um, but I don't understand, and I, I value those kind of opinions, but what I will tell you is I'm not here to say, hey, buy lots of stuff and you'll be happy. There's, there's absolutely no way that's, that's gonna work. But having less stuff isn't gonna necessarily make you happy either. Um, what makes you happy is, Whatever it is that makes you happy. I'll tell you what makes me happy. I play guitar every day. Uh, what is important to me is not how many guitars I have, how expensive they are, how nice they are, how good they play. What was important to me is I got to play guitar. So as much as I love my corporate life, I made a decision one day. I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to play guitar more. And if that means I'm going to be holding other people's guitars and working on them and playing guitar, I was like, that's what it is. I'm going to do that. And if that means I'm going to stand in front of a camera, which I absolutely hate cameras, and talk about guitars so I can be around guitars, that's what I decided. I just wanted to be about around guitars and, and music. So I found a way. Um, there is there is nothing, there's no piece of gear that I bought that's made me as happy as just figuring out how to be around the gear and the music. But I also don't go, man, I, I'm so sad because I have 10 guitars. <laughs> 
So I get it. Um, what I experience, so you know, for me and everybody's different, from my experience is guilt. I have a lot of guilt all the time. Um, I'm constantly feel guilty. Uh, I just, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know, I don't know why. My kids are, are fine. Uh, you know, they, everybody's uh, got a nice car. Everybody's fed, everything's fine. But still at the end of the day, I'm, sometimes I'm like, I look at a guitar I'm not using and I go, ah, we should sell that, put it to better use. Um, I don't know, there's this part of me that's just practical that way. But when it comes to selling your gear, sell your gear because you, you know, if you don't like something and you're not using it, maybe it's time for it to go. It's not easy to be happy. So I'll tell you right now, I don't know who, who, who started that crap for all of us. I, not only is it not easy to be happy, I feel like the older you get, the harder it is to be happy. <laughs> it's a tough thing, man. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and it's the best morning I've ever had. And man, bad information comes in the first 15 minutes. And you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? So um, I just like, I just think that if you're getting joy out of playing music, great. If you get joy out of, I, I have friends, they don't, they could play like three chords and they're constantly upset because somebody on YouTube's like, you need to learn to play guitar and stop, you know, dorking around the guitar, but they have so much fun. Let them do whatever they want. <laughs> If you're having fun, that's the key. If you want to work on guitars, work on guitars. If you want to have 50 guitars to stare at, if you just want to hang them in your house and stare at them, stare at them, I don't care. And if you feel like you've bought too much stuff, well, then you probably did, and thinning it down is going to be nice too. Today's episode of the Know Your Gear podcast is brought to you by Patreon members, channel members, and viewers who like and subscribe. Thank you for making this possible.